The Visitor. This story takes place in Akka and Haifa in the late 1800s and then in the year 1921. Sitting in the corner of the courtyard, shaded from the heat of the midday sun, eight-year-old Samira giggled with delight as she watched the orangey-brown kitten chase its shadow playfully around the courtyard. The kitchen door swung open, and the kitten went scurrying up the wall and over to the neighbor's house. Samira's mother came out of the kitchen into the courtyard, holding a tray of food. Samira, called her mother, please open the door to the bedrooms. Yes, Mama, said Samira. She jumped up and opened the door. Samira watched as her mother warily made her way to the bedroom at the very back. Her mother's hands were shaking as she placed the tray at the foot of the door. Taking a deep breath, Samira's mother knocked, pushed the door open, and placed the tray on the floor inside the room. Samira could hear coughing from inside. Samira's mother said a few words, then just as quickly as she had opened the door, she pulled the door closed and made her way back to the courtyard. Just two days ago, Samira's younger brother, Salim, had gotten into trouble for playing outside that bedroom door. Mama had scolded Salim, telling him that it was not safe and that he needed to stay away from that door. But why? Salim had asked her. Because I don't want you to get sick, Mama had replied sternly. Then, more gently, she had added, like your uncle who is very sick. Samira and Salim loved their uncle very much. For the past few weeks, he had been unwell and now spent all of his days resting in bed. One by one, the neighbors had stopped visiting. Samira and Salim felt as if an invisible wall of fear had been built around their home, keeping everyone away. Back in the courtyard, Samira watched as her mother made her way into the kitchen. Her brow was furrowed into a frown, and she looked worried. With the kitchen door left open, Samira could see her grandmother sitting at the kitchen table shelling peas. How is he? she asked anxiously as Samira's mother walked in. Not well, said Samira's mother, shaking her head. He is so weak and constantly coughing, and he hasn't bathed in days. But I dare not go close to him, otherwise I'll catch it too and then we'll all get sick. Samira's grandmother's eyes filled with tears. We can't just leave him like this. I know, said Samira's mother, her voice trembling. But there is nothing we can do. Samira felt her stomach tighten into a heavy knot. She had never seen her grandmother cry. Samira, too, wanted to cry. That night, Samira went to bed with a heavy heart and a prayer for her uncle on her lips. The next morning, as the first rays of the sun peeked through the cracked and dusty window, Samira awoke to the sound of talking in the courtyard. Thank you, she heard her mother say. We are so grateful. Who is Mama talking to? thought Samira curiously. No one dares to come here anymore. Rubbing sleep from her eyes, Samira peered through the small window, but only in time to see her mother close the courtyard door to the street. The visitor had left. Mama, called Samira as she opened the little window. Who was that? Samira's mother looked at Samira and smiled. It was the first time in weeks that Samira had seen her mother smile. That was Abdu'l-Bahá, she said. He came to help care for your uncle. 
Samira had seen Abdul Baha many times, but she had never met him before. Samira and Salim would often walk up the cobbled street to where Abdul Baha lived, just to catch a glimpse of him. And when they would see him, he was almost always surrounded by a crowd of people. Sometimes there would be up to 100 women, men and children who would come to seek his love, his gentle words of comfort and his wisdom. He never turned anyone away. And now, when no one else dared to help care for her uncle, it was Abdul Baha who had come. Samira's heart felt lighter. There was a joyful skip in her step as she ran out to play with the kitten. Abdul Baha returned the next morning and every day after that for many days, selflessly caring for Samira's uncle. Sometimes he would come with fruits and sweets. Other times he would bring books to read to Samira's uncle. Each time, Samira would watch in awe as Abdul Baha would put aside any fear for his own health and would lovingly take care of her uncle. The day that Samira's uncle took his last breath, Abdul Baha was there, sitting by his side. Many years later, when Samira was a young woman, she heard of the sudden and unexpected passing of Abdul Baha. Heartbroken, Samira, together with Salim, went to his funeral. That day, there was not a cloud in the sky. More than 10,000 women, men and children, of every religion and background, rich and poor, had come to show their love for Abdul Baha. As she looked at the grieving faces around her, Samira felt overwhelmed seeing how many hearts Abdul Baha had touched. She knew that the heart of each person gathered there, like her own heart, had been illumined by the light of Abdul Baha's love and selflessness. Mighty is available on firstvalleybooks.com.